The focus of this video is liver abscess. We will find out about the causes of liver abscess, its symptoms, diagnosis and treatment. In this cartoon over here, you can see the liver at the top right side and an abscess in the liver refers to pus that collects within the liver as shown by these two spots. The liver produces bile which comes out through this tube and drains into the bowel. That's the stomach connected to the small bowel and the pancreas at the back of the stomach. By far the great majority of the liver abscesses occur as a result of infection with bacteria. These are called pyogenic liver abscesses referring to pus forming bacteria. Commonly these are the bacteria that originate, originate within the gut such as the gram negative bacilli the anaerobes and sometimes the gram positive organisms depending on the cause. In some parts of the world a bacteria called Klebsiella may cause liver abscess in the absence of another primary source but occurring directly within the liver itself. In the tropics, parts of Asia and South America, MEBAC is the condition that causes dysentery and diarrhea and rarely it can form a liver abscess but the presentation is different to that caused by bacteria. Patients who have pre-existing medical conditions and who've been treated with antibiotics and in whom the immunity is suppressed are prone to developing fungal liver abscess. And when assessing the symptoms, it is important to realize that the majority of the patients will have another cause for infection. In this cartoon, we can see the liver, the stomach pancreas, and the colon. Appendicitis, as seen over here, may cause bacteria that then travel back through the blood and into the liver causing abscess, equally conditions such as diverticulitis, an infective condition of the colon, may produce the same result. These are just illustrative results and bacterial infection in any part of the abdomen may end up causing liver abscess. The majority occur due to a stricture or narrowing of the bile tube. So this is the bile tube over here and any narrowing or instrumentation of the bile tube may cause the infection to travel back up in the bile and cause abscesses. Even dental infections and infections in far off parts of the body and limbs may travel to the liver if the bacteria are present in the blood. Features of a bacterial liver abscess are quite uniform. Patients end up having fever which may be a swinging or a continuous fever. They are lethargic. They do not have much appetite and they may lose weight. They may have pain in the top right part of their abdomen and it may be associated with jaundice. Untreated abscesses are almost always fatal and these symptoms progress over time if untreated. The amoebic abscesses typically are preceded by diarrheal illness followed by some of the features over here. However, the symptoms are not as severe as what the scans suggest. Fungal abscesses may have similar features but are usually present in patients with significant pre-existing illnesses and hence are not always easy to detect. One giveaway feature is antibiotic treatment of bacterial infections, usually in other parts of the body. The diagnosis of liver abscesses is usually dependent on the scans in patients with symptoms. However, blood tests are useful. The inflammatory markers such as CRP and white cell count are elevated and serological tests of for amoebiasis and fungal infections may be useful in patients in whom these conditions are suspected. One of the most useful tests is a blood culture when the patient has a high temperature. This will isolate the bacteria and direct antibiotic therapy. A guided insertion of needle and aspirating the pus from the liver at the type of treatment is another invaluable test to grow the bacteria in the lab and then find out which type it is, which may also give a clue to the origin or the cause. This is usually carried out at the same time as treatment under ultrasound or CT guidance drainage of the liver. Scans obviously are invaluable in assessing patients with liver abscesses as seen over here. This is a CT scan of a patient with a liver abscess which can be seen in the right lobe of the liver. This scan is a patient with amoebic liver abscess where you can see a large abscess with two other abscesses and this usually is disproportionate because patients are not as symptomatic or ill as those with bacterial abscesses. This is a contrast ultrasonography of a patient with a liver abscess. It is also very important to have a hand the treatment of the liver abscess is dependent upon the size of the abscesses, their number and their location within the liver. One also has to be aware of the associated condition as well as the general condition of the patient. The cornerstone of the treatment is the appropriate antibiotic for bacterial infections and ensuring that the correct antibiotic is used. Now let's look at the cartoon of a liver hair within the abdomen which is not drawn to scale and you can see that there are abscesses 
represented over here, which can be small and multiple, or there could be larger abscesses as seen over here, as, and then there could be multi-loculated abscesses of different sizes. And the treatment strategy for each of these would be tailored according to the involvement of the liver. Now, apart from the antibiotics and the appropriate therapy for whatever type of the abscess, drainage is necessary for larger abscesses that cannot be treated with antibiotics. In general, abscesses three centimeters or smaller in size such as that, can be treated with antibiotics only. Larger abscesses would require a drainage procedure. Increasingly, this is now done under ultrasound guidance, where an ultrasound or a CT is utilized to insert a needle into the abscess cavity, and then the pus is drained, leaving a drain within the cavity of the abscess, which is frequently flushed and left in place for so long as uh, the abscess is fully drained. Larger abscesses do not lend themselves, especially if they have multiloculated to this treatment and at times either multiple drains are required or surgical intervention is necessary. The drainage of these abscesses with surgery can be done with minimally invasive means such as laparoscopy or less commonly through the open route. Increasingly most abscesses are now drained with multiple placements of radiological drains with surgery as a backstop. This culminates this brief overview of liver abscess. If you have any comments